Well, let's get started on writing that winning executive summary. <clears throat> Your goal is to, in two pages or less, give the judges or an investor the information they absolutely need to know to decide whether they're interested or believe in your project. People ask me, can I put photos in? Yes. Drawings? Yes. Tables? Yes. Graphs? Yes. More than two pages? No. Occasionally, we will have folks come to us and say, I just have tried and tried and I can't get it in less than two pages. I guarantee you an effective executive summary should be two pages or less. When you can't get it to two pages or less, one of two things is happening. Either A, uh, you're including a lot of facts that don't necessarily need to be in the executive summary, or B, you're not focused, you're not following the template, you're not putting out the information that people need and not the information they don't need. So this isn't about answering every conceivable question. This is about hitting the highlights that they really want to know and walk away and say, yeah, that's interesting. I'm looking forward to reading their business plan. And then in those two pages, you want to try to make them as well-written and error-free as possible. And I know this is a challenge because not everybody is that, uh, that good of a writer, that good of a proofreader, that good in grammar. And people say to me, why is that? And the honest answer is, nobody picks up a piece of paper, reads it, finds all kinds of mistakes in it and says, you know what, I bet that person is a genius because they don't write very well. Unfortunately, the only thing people can think from a error-filled uh, paper is negative things. So if you struggle with writing well, recruit someone to your team that does write well. Remember, the real goal for the executive summary at this phase in IDWF is to convince the judges you're one of the 15 most worthy candidates. I encourage you to download the sample executive summary on Dr. Speedometer. This is not an executive summary that they gave me. Uh, this is a company I personally used. And so I decided, well, let me write for you uh, an example of what I think is an effective executive summary that you could uh, have as an example as you write yours. Let me walk you briefly through a good executive summary. First paragraph is very important. To the extent that you can generate interest, or throw out a catchy line or something like that, that's a positive. But you want to very quickly orient the reader as to what it is that your business proposes to do. Then, after this orient quick orientation, you want to get into the details of what your business does. One of the easiest ways to think about this is problem and solution. There's a problem in the world, blah, 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 and here's how my product solves it, blah, 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 blah. So let's ex illustrate that with Dr. Speedometer. There's a problem in the world. GM produced a bunch of trucks and SUVs that have faulty dashboard uh, instruments that are going to fail. Solution. Dr. Speedometer refurbishes those bad instrument clusters and sends the person back a fully guaranteed, fully operable new dashboard to put into their truck or SUV. Even though I don't encourage you to write, there is a problem in the world, da -da -da -da, and my solution is, da -da -da. if you think that way, then you're going to be off to a good start. Once you have explained the problem and the, the basics of your uh, solution, then you need to talk about the business, which is, who's the market? How are you going to tap, tap into them? What are their buying characteristics? Um, and then, who are the existing competitors? One of the mistakes people make is they will say, I have no competitors, when what they really mean is, nobody is doing exactly what I'm proposing to do. That's very different, because the marketplace may see you as competition uh, with businesses that you think are very different than yours, but from the consumer standpoint, you provide a similar benefit and thus are a competitor. Think, too, about what is your competitive advantage? Why are you better than what's out there in the marketplace? And then, how are you going to stay better? In the case of Dr. Speedometer, he does have several competitors. They all do basically the same thing. So he has to provide better service. And given that this is an electronic business, he has to provide uh, make sure his website, website 
always stays at the forefront because customers find him through his website. Then you want to talk about the, the, the business and the business model. What price are you going to charge? In most cases, the business model is pretty straightforward. We charge X, the customer pays X. But that's not always the case. So you may have a novel business model, if nothing else. For example, look at the difference between Netflix and Redbox. What's important to the Netflix DVD by download, or I'm sorry, movie by download service? The number of subscribers. Whether you use their service is not central to them. What's important is that you sign up and allow them to keep charging you every month. Redbox, on the other hand, needs you to go to their machines and rent their movies because they don't get any money unless there's a movie that comes out of their machine. So you can see subscribers against actual movie rentals is a little bit of a different business model. And I encourage you to think about your business model. You may be able to put in some twists that will actually significantly change your revenue. <clears throat> Talk about your management team. Some people say, is it okay if I'm the only person? Well, of course. Talk about every person, whether it's one or many that are involved. Obviously, it's great if you have some experience doing what it is you're proposing to do in your new business, but IDWF is built around giving people a start, so it's not a big deal uh, if you don't. And then talk about where your business is today. <clears throat> if it's just an idea that you've written about on your paper, that's okay. But if you have developed a prototype, done some trial sales, something like that, make sure you take credit for that too. And then in an effective executive summary, you're going to see these financial details. But I'm going to tell you right up front, I tell the judges that probably at this point, you don't have that level of information. And it's okay. If you do have financial projections, feel free to put them in in summary form. But if you don't have financial projections, that's okay too. You'll work on that very, very hard when you develop your business plan. I cannot uh, strongly enough encourage you, or too strongly I should say, encourage you. Well, I'm, I think I'm confusing myself. I really encourage you, let me say it that way, to use the Small Business Development Center and their expertise. And the way you can tap into their expertise is electronically write your executive summary and then email it to them at the ideawf at gmail.com they will acknowledge the receipt of that within a day or so. If they don't, there was a problem that got sent into a caught by a spam filter or something like that. So make sure you call them or email them to make sure that they've got it. They will take that, have at least two people review it. They'll electronically type their comments uh, into the file using the track changes uh, model. And then they'll email it back to you. This is your first step of feedback, and I think everybody should want feedback. One of the number one things the Small Business Development, can, Development Center can help you with is we all, because we've been thinking about our business and thinking about our business, we know our business so well that when we write about it, there's big gaps in thought that never dawn on us because we know exactly what we mean when we write that sentence. They can be your first line of defense in saying, this section doesn't make any sense. And the reason it doesn't make any sense is because there's a lot of things you know that are important that are not said. And so they will help you with that. To tap into their expertise, though, you need to email them this by the 18th of November. It's a little over a week from when I'm making this, uh, this video. And then they will get it back to you before the Thanksgiving week, which gives you another week and a half to play with it before you turn it into us on the 4th of December. And so to summarize, the key date is December the 4th, not later than 5 p.m., to bring your six copies of your executive summary, your check or cash for $100, and a signed copy of the application form here in the Diller College of Business to the Lani Center on the second floor, and you'll be away to the races. If you have any questions, you can send them to uh, the website, you can also call the Small Business Development Center to tap into their expertise, 397-4373, or you can call me, 397-4634. Let me just end this video by saying I'm proud of you. It takes courage to actually commit to starting a business. Many people think about it, few people do. Congratulations. Don't stop now.